Hello, Janet. Are you there? Hello, world. Hi, TJ. This is Karen. Hi, Karen. How are you? <laughs> well, we're all... are we we're on having... air? We're... You and I yeah. are. I think we're having gremlins in our... Uh... Oh, again. Well, hello, everybody. This is Karen and TJ, and we're here uh, for Aquarian Radio tonight with Janet Carolesson and Katerina Roy. So, uh, Karen, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Katerina while we're waiting on Janet to show up. She might be talking to her right now. Can you give an intro oh, yes. for Katerina? Yes, I will. Kat- I met Katerina uh, Edwards Roy. Uh, she's I've seen her around. She was a Facebook friend, you know, someone you kind of see what they were up to. And she created a, a, an artist support circle, and I joined that. And for a brief period of time, we had an artist support circle online using a Google Hangout on air. And we got to know uh, the different artists that were in there. And, and, and we shared more of our journeys to stay creative and stay positive. So I really appreciated her for that. So she uh, became available to talk to us, and I'll read her what she said is Katerina Edwards Roy is a holistic wellness coach who helps women recovering from stress, illness, and trauma get their sexy back so they can feel better and lead more abundant lives. She does this through her Happy Healthy Hot coaching programs and her upcoming online school, Happy Healthy Hot Academy. I, th- I want to go to that. Uh, Katrina gives women. <laughs> this sounds fun. Uh, Katrina gives women practical, actionable steps, as well as loving, no nonsense advice for total transforma- transformation. After uh, enduring a decade of her own heartache, depression, and chronic illness, she's realized that we're meant to experience our everyday life feeling full, turned on, passionate, and powerful, no matter what may bring. And I want to add to that that she's very accepting of people and wherever they're at. I I just thoroughly enjoyed getting to know her. And she also uh, is a painter uh, and we're going to be getting some of her work up on a bio page. Uh, And she also has a free ebook called Paint Your Heart Out. It's on YouTube. And it's got one of those gobbledygook YouTube addresses. So I'm going to give you your, her YouTube channel, which is a little bit easier to pronounce. And it's www.youtube.com forward slash user forward slash, and she spelled her name funny, Katerina E. But it's K-A-A-A-T-E-R-I-N-E. So maybe Katerina and E for Edwards. Uh, so I hope you got that, and we'll also be posting that up so you can find that. And um, another resource that we talked about in the group briefly was an artist recovery book that's been around for a long time. I've used it in uh, multiple times and in, been in multiple online groups. With the book. An educational comedy. It's not a cause. Not a movement. It's not a social group you can slap a label on. It's an idea. 
It's an intention. It's an intuition. A mindset in which reality can be explored. It's a genuine expression. So critical thinking and imagination. To look inward upon ourselves. To better understand the external world around us. And yes, few egos are bound to be bruised. With our silly, strange, politically incorrect. Your style of going about things. Real, Real and raw honesty. Which invites you to be to the, the fullest. fullest. Hi, this is Janet Care Lesson. I just called into this my own show. TJ, Karen, or Katarina, can you talk? Yeah, I we've been right talking. Yeah, we did You've been intro. talking away, and I can't, couldn't hear anything. <laughs> and I just like locked out of my own show. Wow. Okay. Wow. Welcome to for me to back to Aquarian Radio. All right. Um, <laughs> thanks for carrying on in my absence. <laughs> Don't you love it? It's like, what in the world's going on? <laughs> no, anyway. but that's what we're here for is to help each other. So congratulations and welcome, everybody. This is Janet Carroll Lesson with her own Aquarian radio show. <laughs> Glad she's back. <laughs> well, just to let you know, uh, co-hosts and guests and everybody, uh, there is a number, 646-649-0893. And I got locked out of my show. I couldn't hear anything, so I called into my show as a guest. I'm a guest of my own show as a host, so I'm doing two roles at once. Uh, Karen, let me just catch up. Did you uh, read the bio for Katerina? Yeah, I did, and uh, I can do it again. Uh, but it was kind of fun. I was in the middle, and all of a sudden we had beautiful, majestic music. <laughs> and and uh, there we go. <laughs> and and the show's about about creativity and creativity is the best tool for rolling with what, the unexpected things of life. So we definitely have that already going here. <laughs> so I can I can read it again or uh uh we can uh, introduce Katarina and uh Katarina, hello. <laughs> Hi. Thanks Hi, for Katarina. being patient. Yes, thanks for being patient with our gremlins. And what we can do is uh, introduce each of, each of us, and we'll uh, we'll start with Janet, and then TJ, and then me, and then we'll you can we'll have you tell us about yourself, and we'll get the ball rolling. All right. How okay. about we start with TJ so I can recover a little bit here? I'm I'm uh, also launching everything, so we have our chat and everything going. So TJ, why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, and then I'll go second. Sure. Hello, everyone in the world. Thank you for joining us today. I don't even know what day it is. Oh, here it is on my computer, duh, bottom right-hand corner. It's August 19th, 2015, and I am an author and a speaker and a radio host and, believe it or not, an, an artist. And where Janet is is in Hawaii. I'm in Kentucky, and I was an official artist of Hawaii. I had to go through a big deal to become an artist of Hawaii, and I uh, got to sell some of my paintings uh, back in the day. Some of them went as much as 5000 Amazing, huh? <laughs> and we made pogs and all that stuff, but I have several books available on Amazon. I love people. I'm very outgoing and uh, done a lot of work on myself, but most of all, I'm known for doing psychic readings on T.J. Mars Radio Show, so T.J. Mars E.T. Radio, and Janet and I have been friends for years in the UFO community, and then along came this wonderful lady named Karen that's just very motivational and happy and exciting and bringing us new people, so I'm excited to be here, and welcome Katarina. I can't wait to meet a new lady, so hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna have you be last, Katarina, because you're gonna get interviewed for the first hour. So, so I'm Janet Care Lesson, and um, T.J. Morris and I have created our radio shows. We do them together and independently. My uh, radio show is the Aquarian Radio Network, and uh, T.J. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's T.J. Morris E.T. or T.J. Morris Media or T.J. Morris something, but it's got her fabulous uh, T.J. Morris in it, so you can find her. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, your mom's ET radio, I think. But, yeah, yeah. I've got tjmarsmedia.com. I just do a little bit of everything, and we threw it under TJ Mars Media. But, yeah, just uh, Teresa J. Morris is what Janet – oh, but you know, it's because Janet got me doing conferences with her, so she wants me under Teresa J. Morris as my author name. So yeah. there you go. Now, I guess we'll get that straight for this fourth year <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> but Janet yeah, sure. is an author, too. So, Janet, tell people I'm about not- you. I have a, uh, several books. I'm an Anunnaki researcher, and I co-author books on the Anunnaki with my beloved husband, Dr. Sasha Lesson, who's an anthropologist and um, psychotherapist. And our three Anunnaki books are Anunnaki Gods No More, Anunnaki Legacy of the Gods, and Anunnaki False Gods. And then I'm starting my autobiographical series called Dance of the Souls, and that's uh, my life as an experience and remembering past lives and my interdimensional and lives and simultaneous multidimensional lives. And I will be presenting my uh, first experiencer, my first experiencer conference in October at um, the Sacramento, California Experiencer Conference. Today's show is about art, and I started out life as an artist when I was a child. I went through art torture. My teacher would make me do all these art projects for the school, including uh, I had to draw Lincoln and, and Washington and a big map of the country, and and I'd have all my homework on top of it. So I, you know, I, I kind of lost my joy for art when it was required of me, and I felt intimidated that I would. It was kind of almost like sexual harassment. It was child harassment. If you don't do art, you know, you it would give you a bad grade. So. Um, Anyway, but that was interesting. So I've always been artistic, and I now I express myself artistically in my websites, and I have, which are legion, but um, let's see what else about me. And I'm a, a talk show host, and I'm a mother of cats. I live in the jungle <laughs> of Hawaii, and we have a dozen, we have a cat colony. Uh, the, the cats are a real problem all over the islands because um the people have set them free, and they just breed prolifically. And once in a one a set of cows could produce a litter, which within about three years, can we have as many as like thirty-two thousand cats, you know, from one pair? So it's a real problem. So I I take them in and get them spayed and neutered, and yes, yeah, send money, please. <laughs> it costs a lot to feed them, and and it's, and I can say, Why please don't that? get. Please don't get sick because, you know, whenever you go to bed these days, you're looking at a, between $100 dollars $500 just to say howdy. So that's amazing. Okay, I think and that's Janet, enough you're about. you're a singer, too. Janet's a singer, and I'm, oh, a, I'm singer. a singer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I, I didn't uh, professional, but I I could sing a big karaoke in my day. And um, I once got a standing ovation, which was very uh, humbling when you you just turn around and everybody's like standing up and uh, standing ovation. I went, wow, I, didn't, I just thought I was doing karaoke. But that was good. Um, so, yeah, we have an artistic side, and I'm, and I'm also a therapist with my husband. We do uh, psychotherapy and relationship counseling. And I just I was putting together... Uh, Katarina's website, and it looks like we would call you uh, a tantrika. Uh, yeah. You like to talk skills, <laughs> sex, or passion. We'll talk about sex, passion, spirituality. I am I also from Charles Muir, which was Janet's uh, partners, Janet's husband's husband. partner, and then Janet they were became partners. Here. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and then when I came here in in '97, I established the School of Tantra, which was 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 going on before I got here. But I I um, revamped it, made re- websites, and started working with Dr. Lesson as a couple, a toxic couple, keep teaching couples and singles about tantra, but using tantric psychology uh, because if you don't get your chakras clear, you don't get your issues resolved, you ain't gonna have a kundalini awakening. All right, enough about me. On to Karen, who are you, Karen? Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is fun listening to everybody's creative <laughs> side you? after listening to the radio stuff. Uh, yeah, I grew up uh, in a multi generational musical family. So we had a musical tradition. Uh, we played Irish music, we played my dad's crazy uh, folk uh, folk songs and country songs. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, my dad was a voice teacher, so I learned to sing properly. 
And I did a lot of musical stuff growing up. I also played the saxophone and Irish tin whistle. And then uh, I became um, interested in theater, so I started doing theater, but I always liked to do the backstage part more than being up front. So costuming, that was the biggest thing, makeup, um, prop, making props, uh, backdrops, you know, all that sort of thing. That was, I really enjoyed that. And then... Um, then I had, uh, when I had my children, it got a little too busy to do that sort of thing. And when they got a little older, I, the kids joined in. That my my two sons are musicians, and my daughter's a, she's the one that she's your phone a friend if you want to know anything about music. So it that music's a huge part of our my family life. And then, uh, but my daughter was disabled, so it got harder to go to like rehearsals and things. So I got into collage, painting, watercolor, and and art. When I was younger, I didn't do a lot of um, that sort of art because I had a visual impairment, and you know I had I couldn't color in the lines. I was I was lucky if I could see the page, you know. So anyway, when I got older, I really wanted to explore that, and I really enjoyed it. And I found so much spiritual connection between music and painting. It, there's a lot of spiritual connection between the two, and that's been my therapy. I I was pretty pinned down with a kid in a wheelchair it was not hard it was hard to get around to do things so I was home a lot so I had a craft area that kind of grew exponentially and went crazy and then uh, I I put she ended up living in an adult family home I then I was like I'm doing like decades of art so I had a decade a couple decades of music decade of painting then I moved on to a boat, which was a whole story by itself. So I had a shrinky dink everything in my life. So I went to digital art, but mostly I definitely turned to doing poetry. Somewhere in there, I did automatic writing poetry, and I actually have an automatic writing poetry book out. Uh, just got it out about a couple months ago. Haven't promoted it much, but it's really profound. I learned a lot from my guides because they they had me spill it out on paper, and a lot of it was very poetic. And I write my own poetry as well. I'm working on a second poetry book. Um, and I live with my partner, and he's a poet and, a, and an artist too. So our walls are covered with our own art. And Katarina's seen it because we had a video chat. So she's seen uh, some of his stuff and my stuff. And um, it, we have an artist household and very creative. But we are working very hard on research on the Anunnaki, on l lunar anomaly research, um, earth anomaly research. I'm an admin for quite a number of groups having to do with research of anomalies um, and, and, and aliens. And I'm, the proudest thing I could talk about right now or to say is that I'm the admin or the, I was a forming admin for, wait for it, the, the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Foundation for Research into Extraterrestrial Encounters. Big long name. We just call ourselves FREE, F-R-E-E. -E. And beautifully, beautifully, we have many experiencers here painting pictures of the beings that they've seen. So I love art for all the things that it can do. That just, just you know, straight up saying stuff, it, 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 it embellishes it so well, and and makes us able to communicate mind to mind through the portals of art. So I was thrilled to meet Katarina. She started an artist support circle, and we had some online stuff, and I got to know her, and she's a kindred spirit to all of us. Katarina, please tell us about yourself. <laughs> Thank you for the beautiful introduction, Karen. I really appreciate it. And, um, well, yeah, I've, like you all said, I've been a painter for, well, for the past eight years, really, and I use artwork to be able to heal myself from a lot of mental and emotional issues that I had as growing up. And it was always my escape to be able to do something artistic. It got my mind off of things and helped me process emotion in a way that just talking about it couldn't do. And art has always really been a therapeutic outlet for me. And so I can really identify with using the artist way and, and automatic writing and and all of the things that we do in order to to heal ourselves and our creativity. So uh, that has been a humongous part of my life and really the, the fuel that has made me want to go forward and help people and and help them tap into that part of themselves where they can actually heal and and use creativity to be able to heal. It's not, it, I mean, it comes through with sexuality, with sensuality, with spirituality, and also just creatively being able to put ink on paper or paint on a canvas. Uh, all of it has to do with being able to open up ourselves even deeper and wider and, 
be able to reach down into our souls and, and pull up all of the treasures. And so that's really how I've used art. Um, I have a musical side too. I'm, I like to sing. I like to write. Um, late, lately I've been getting into jewelry making and just other things that really express beauty and, and to put that out into the world. And so, yeah, and any, any and all forms I'm definitely a fan of. Hi, it's um, Jan. I'm gonna, Ms. Jan. I'm going to start with some questions for you, okay? And then we'll go round table. I I'll go first, and then I, I don't know Karen and you, you and TJ can figure out who who goes second. But I was looking at your website, and and you say my hobbies are as follows: sex, art, laughing, making a difference, and making money. Dollar 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 biz bills, yo. I am also someone of a spiritual teacher. I am also a life coach specializing in passion and personal power. For some reason, these areas haven't seemed to mix very well with my professional image. I think it was still a bit scary. I was, I was a bit scared of speaking out about all this stuff for fear that someone would think poorly of me. My question today is why? Why are sex and passion so taboo when they are necessary and important to life? So I'm going to put your own question back to you because she who asks has an answer. You know. So there, <laughs> oh, back to you. What, what is all this about sex and passion and taboos? I feel... I feel like in this culture that we have where, you know, sex is something that people keep very hush-hush and artists are condemned for speaking their mind and everyone's emotions are in these beautiful little boxes that we keep suppressed with pills and and addictions and overeating and all of the, the, the crazy neurosis that happens when really if we were able to tap into that taboo box, we would see the, the keys to our own healing. We would see that everything that we've been looking for has been within everything that we've been condemning as taboo. And so I'll, I'll relate to you my own personal experience with that. Um, I had fibromyalgia, and it wasn't really until I started tapping into uh, the, the, the pains of the past and getting them out through speaking and artwork and being able to process those emotions. Uh, they were all related around sexuality and they were related around, um, you know, just abuse and, and emotional issues that I just had stuffed away. And of course, emotions are taboo. Emotions are, you know, you don't talk about that at the dinner table, Billy. You, you know, you talk about that in private, or you have to go to a counselor, and then you're being judged for going to a counselor, or, you know, this, this kind of neurosis. So with that, I feel like creativity is really something where it, it, it gives a voice to be able to express some of these deeper parts of our human psyches, right? So that is what I meant by that, was people have, like, this professional layer, this persona that is, quote-unquote, acceptable to the world, and then there's this whole underbelly and when they detach from that underbelly, then there's, that's where the problems arise, you know. That's where people start getting sick and people start having dysfunction in their marriages and in their, in their lives, really. So this is what I'm talking about, helping people uncover that stuff and being able to bring it out into the light and look at it and see that it's not so scary, that it's not so bad, and to normalize the taboo nature of things. And so people can actually heal. And passion is a very healing force. It's, it's your life force. It's something that you can tap into and allow to move through you and heal your body. So, yeah, that's, that was my answer. I, I agree. I, I, um, it, it just amazes me when, we, when I hear stories about people that can't express, you know, their feelings and emotions in the family. I mean, it's like... <laughs> It's like shutting off your life force and not mm -hmm. being able to express. And that's so common throughout the world that you're not able to express. But I've created a life now that I say everything I think. <laughs> so yes. to, for me to go in that box, it's just, a, you know, I, it, there's at least one avenue in my life. I have one person that I can express myself. Um, you know, I, I filter it. I don't have to scream and yell and, you know, say nasty curse words and stuff like that. But I mm -hmm. at least way of expressing it and I understand about the art expression I had a friend buddy and he's 
they make these incredible paintings, and I would say, well, well, what's the story behind that one? He says, well, that's my breakup from from Sue, and that's my breakup from Karen. So it was like, <laughs> whenever he had a breakup, it came out in his um, his art, and it came out in this profound, beautiful art. And so, you know, that's what he did. He he did uh, paintings, beautiful oil paintings. So, all right, well, let's pass this on to TJ or Karen. Who wants to go next? Go ahead, TJ. Oh, okay. TJ, yes. you're, you're next. Okay. <laughs> what was you about to say? I don't know Maybe what to say. Karen, I mean, or do you have feedback or comments? Oh, oh, no, I love getting to know people, and I'm excited to to meet Katerina. And, uh, you know, we regarding, can't. yeah, I, it's, I, I would imagine she's much younger than I am. I'm 63 and a half and already through menopause, but I do have uh, all those memories of being a young girl and a teenager and then a mother and uh, having to have uh, companions and spouses, and I am presently married and still just as much in my uh, love with my husband as I was when I first met him, my beloved husband. And uh, some of us need companions, and it was so funny. My daughter put something up that some of us don't, and so I guess it's a matter of perspective. It seems like uh, being a humanoid, sentient, intelligent being that most of us do want a companion of some type. Uh, you know, uh, we're pretty much in a gender nation, but uh, gen- gender and uh, doesn't necessarily have anything to do, or does it, with who we are in our emotional body. I would suggest it does, because uh, just for instance, uh, someone uh, has recently gotten all kind of notoriety for switching over from being a male all his life to a female, and that is Bruce Jenner. And uh, I would suggest that most of my life I thought I was a man and a, or a, a boy in a girl's body when I was growing up, and my mother had to really work on me to get me to act properly. <laughs> now I don't give a darn, <laughs> but I, I, I look very feminine, and uh, my husband knew when he married me. Every husband did. I always told him I felt like a man and a woman's body and I did men's jobs but you know what I had a very good life in the government as an investigator and I was an artist too and thank goodness being a model as a woman and an artist saved me so I learned a lot of lessons just like uh, Katerina did through art singing dancing music uh, all the artistic stuff and I was, although I love science and I'm left brain logic I prefer right brain and I am learning in my old age to be whole brain thinking so uh, I'm glad we're having this conversation today, and I can get in you know, down dirty, or I can get as above light, however you want to go. <laughs> Karen, you want to take over for us here for a minute? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I just, uh, I'm, I'm enjoying uh, that we're going right there, Janet, thank you, about our sexuality. I think uh, what I've, you know, kind of uncovered is that our society is uh, patriarchal. Can we say that? And it's yes. uh, it's afraid of it's afraid of female power. It's afraid of it makes the woman the object of art, but not necessarily the artist. So when I went to go study art history, or me, I was more interested in music history in high school and college. We studied all the dudes, you know, all the dudes that were uh, artists who um, uh, did the famous stuff, and uh, the very few women artists. Uh, were no, brought up as, and notarized in different eras, unless they were just so darn good, or they had somehow they ha- they practically had to have a a school or a university or something notable before they kind of rose to the top. Um, and so uh, the ma- the male the, the, then the then that whole genre of artists, and this is what the artist way talks about, is that art's kind of a business. It's kind of a genre. It's kind of a a discipline, academic discipline puts all kinds of expectations the the art market puts so art is is kind of processed to us as media as a genre and yet it really is an expression and then I found out later really where women's art really shown throughout history was the homily art so it'd be quilting basket weaving um making pottery, that sort of thing, with more the things for the home. And that's where we have the wonderful, you know, all kinds of indigenous art. And we have um, 
you know, quilting. Uh, I, I did some quilting, so I, I really enjoy people who do it better than me. And uh, <laughs> so, Katarina, um, you know, we're, we're 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 interesting generations here, you know, and we're we're kind of went through women's lib and a lot of the, you know, repression thing. From your perspective, we're, we're, what's it like to be in your generation as a woman and an artist? As a woman and an artist right now, I feel. I still feel the pressure of not really being able to entirely express what it is that I want to express without having a slant like, oh, you're, you must be a feminist or, oh, you must be, you know, a slut or a pervert or something like, like the, all of these distortions of what is inherently sacred and pure and beautiful. So for me, as a highly sexual person, obviously, because I'm super creative, it's like those two things go hand in hand. And I think for a long time, people have wanted to separate the two and to not look at it as an entire entity because they want to have the beautiful creative artworks without the the fuel for that, without that side of the person. You know, they look at the person and they look at, you know, take, for instance, uh, old artists like Frida Kahlo. Like if, if any of you have ever watched her biography or you read her biography, you know that she had multiple partners and she was just very, very out there sexually. And that's really kind of frowned upon. See, now I'm I'm married, but it's like that is my my experience within my marriage is just very dynamic, hot, fiery passion, and and it's just something that. Is, is something that I can't turn off it, 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 because that's my life force and that's something that moves through me and it's just, and it moves me to move my expression. So when I'm in society, I still feel a little bit of like resistance, like even having a conversation like this on radio still kind of is a little bit disconcerting, like being able to put that stuff out on my blog. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I going to be punished for this? Like is somebody going to say like, oh, you should take that down right now, Look, that looks bad on you, like, that that aspect has not gone away, even though there has been women's liberation and, like, all of these kinds of things that have happened in history. So um, I still feel like that, quote-unquote, patriarchal aspect of society still exists, and it's still, to some extent, running the show. So... I still feel a little bit of that 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 struggle. Wow. Well, well, what we want you to do is have fun here because this is all girls. Of course, here. of course. <laughs> I don't want to have a round table with all these wonderful women. <laughs> no, I understand that. Yeah, I I totally know what you're saying. I I grew up in a re- religious environment, so there was a lot of um, other parameters put on what, and I, and I think that's why uh, it's always interesting to me how quilting is. If you've ever seen a crazy quilt, it, it's a it's not got the squares or the circles just right. It's just patches of color. And, and the, the, you see somebody who's really got a lot of passion. They're locked in a wall. The crazy quilts were huge in, like, uh, the 1800s. And that is fun to see because it's, it's like abstract art. It's really got a lot of color and passion, and they're trying all the different stitches and creativity within these extreme constraints, you know, while they're wearing bonnets and bustles and things. And corsets, <laughs> and and they're just going nuts. If you've seen crazy quilts, or there'll be things that they sneak in, or I mean, uh, all through uh, through it, uh, the textile arts and those homely arts, um, it's coming through. And and I'll just quickly say, I had a, about a decade of being celibate. That was a choice because I was raising my children. I did not want to co-parent with anyone because any person I knew that was doing that had a, it was disastrous, and I was especially concerned for my disabled daughter, I, and I was, um, but I'm still a sexual person. I tell you, man, I put out a lot of art. <laughs> well, I, uh, I was crazy. <laughs> I was crazy quilt, crazy collages, crazy everything. I was, so I, I, I got my expression out there. I, I did some theater, too, and uh, uh, made costumes, and I was crazy. I, I, I got my passion out that way, and, and it was it was fine for that time, and then now I have a wonderful partner, and that's good, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. I appreciate that 
uh, what is repressed becomes demonic. <laughs> and so when I uh, was beginning to express my uh, whole life of uh, sexual, um, you know, confinement, and it came out in a big way. So when I rebelled against it all, you know, I've always felt very, very sexual. I was a, I was a, type, a type of child that, um, you know, I was masturbating at a very young age just to just put it out there. I and mean, I didn't know what to do with my sexuality. And I was frustrated. My mother used to yell at me, you know, for touching myself. So I learned to repress that. And, and then I was, um, my formative years were during the 60s. And I was hearing about love-ins and free love and... Uh, the Beatles were at the top of the charts, and and I was raised Republican, but I was very liberal in my my own orientation. I guess my orientation basically is liberal and and loving oneness and and um, expression and freedom. And so I, I couldn't quite understand all the repression, and so I got involved with a group of kids that were um, experimenting with free love, and uh, you know, of course, there were. There were four of us girls, and three out of four got pregnant. I did not get pregnant, but I started being sexually active very young. And then I I felt ashamed of my own sexuality, and I got married at 16 because I was out of control. Part of me judged myself as being out of control. you got to pull that in, right? And so I got mm-hmm. married, and um, you know, I was monogamous for the next 13 years. But it, by that time, I was dealing with all of this. Um, My husband was cheating on me, so there was, once again, the sexual repression and the denial of the true attractions that we might experience, especially when we're young people in our teens and 20s. So my husband and I went through our teens and 20s, uh, confining ourselves to monogamy while that, again, once again, what is repressed becomes demonic, so it was coming out, you know, ass sideways in, in cheating. So, but fast forward, I, I went to marriage number two, and that was pretty conservative. Once again, trying to contain my own natural expression, and so it wasn't until the 90s when I encountered the uh, polyamory movement. I think my orientation is polyamorous. Uh, a lot of humanity goes through life being serially monogamous. But one of my revelations was, uh, first of all, I didn't stop loving anybody I ever loved. I had had I hadn't had a lot of lovers by the time I hit forty. I'd only had like five or six, but I still realized that if I, you know, went that far and I made love with somebody, that I always loved them, even though things didn't work out. And I had this divine forgiveness and and um, you know, wishing the best for them. I, I couldn't hate somebody and demonize them and want them bad like some people do in order to break up and go on. So I and I discovered one time when I was in my late. 30s, mid to late 30s, that I was in love with my husband, and there was another man I met on the internet. I am the very first internet divorce. Somebody tracked it down and said, you are the first internet divorce. And I ended up <laughs> having an affair with a man who was married. We were both married. But we were embracing the term polyamory, and we were doing it wrong. You know, cheating is not polyamory. We were actually polyamorous, but there was no, wasn't even a word for it originally, and so... Um, You know, once again, we had to suppress ourselves and what was repressed comes out demonic. So I ended up moving to Hawaii. I established um, a polyamory support group, which is still going, by the way. That was in 93. So uh, we're uh, 23 years later, so we get. And... um, and, and polyamory now is a, is a worldwide movement. So I've always been a supporter of the BLG, BLG, what is it, BLGT, the, the, the bi, transsexual, you know, polyamorous, tantric community and sexual expression. And I've done everything I can, but I get, I get criticized by the people in the ET movement, like, oh, you're, you're, you're doing polyamory and Tantra and, you know, all this stuff. And I get criticized by the, the Tantra polyamory community that I'm doing ET stuff. So there's <laughs> always a part of me that has to be repressed and it's driving me crazy. So yay for Bruce Jenner, who's now <laughs> 
transgender. I have uh, uh, several friends that are transgendered. They've always been around. It's like a repression of the whole society. And I'm also supporting people that are basically prostitutes because we've had prostitutes since the dawn of time. Um, you know, I, I think we just need to get our, our governments and our, you know, religions, you know, out of other people's business and let people be who they are. There, I climbed up my pulpit. I'm going to pass it on to TJ. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, well, I don't Charles. know where to go after that. <laughs> I guess I we're sharing experiences. I'm not sure here. I thought we were going to interview uh, just one lady, but apparently we're doing Speaking a panel. Back, Katarina, but I, I'm sorry. That was repression that came out. Okay. I TJ. love it. I celebrate it. Let's, oh, yeah. Good. Thank, thank you. <laughs> Next person. <laughs> Can you hear me? Am I supposed to come up with something? or uh, Well, uh, art emotionally is a very good cathartic. Say pass if if you're fabricast and we'll come back around to you. But uh, whatever you want to say. Okay. I'm very open-minded about all this. It's just I haven't done this in like 30 years. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I've done a lot of radio shows, but for some reason, Katerina, you do bring uh, openness uh, that we're, uh, you know, even though – we have been in a male dominant society, and uh, in the past, uh, of course, we have a moral society, and they want to keep us all separated. But I think it goes back to uh, the oldest profession in the world and what women had to do to survive. It didn't matter what country, uh, it was the role we were put in. And a lot of it comes after the goddess energy. I believe men at one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're very much uh, in awe of uh, us women, and we were the ones making the babies. So uh, mm-hmm. off planet, uh, I could tell you a different story. But uh, here, uh, we, it depends on what level we want to speak, and I'm accustomed to speaking off way out there, so to speak. You know, like in the hippie movement, it was like, man, she's far out. <laughs> 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 but uh, I was, uh, I'd miss the hippie movement. Uh, I was married at 16, and my husband worked at NASA, and I had already had a security clearance and uh, cleared uh, to be around the president thing. So I had a very unique life. So, But, you know, I, I learned uh, it was like being a sort of a debutante at 16, and then I got introduced, uh, well, to sex uh, in the front of a car, at a drive-in, no. <laughs> okay? So uh, I, I was a virgin when I married my husband. So uh, I met my husband. I just shouldn't say married him because we got married during the Vietnam War, so I had four daughters. But I was, uh, you know, a typical teenager, and uh, I was uh, brought up a uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And, uh, you know, it was just typical America. But I was in Houston, Texas, and I grew up in Monroe, Louisiana, so we're sort of backwards going to the big city of Houston. And my dad was very Republican, and my mother was very Democrat. And it was quite an interesting uh, uh, uniqueness. And uh, so, yeah, I, I was I went to church, and I always thought as a little girl how strange it was that they smoked and drank beer and played poker on the weekends, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I made moral judgments then, but not about sex because my uh, – I remember boys jumping on boys when I was a little girl out in the woods. And uh-huh. uh, uh, that stuff I've never really told anybody. <laughs> Here I am saying it to the world. <laughs> yep. but, on the uh, show. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's how I was introduced was uh, boys with boys. So uh, I don't know that uh, that's something people need to know. It's probably too much information for people. But, you know, I did express it in my dancing and my music and uh i loved my basketball my my gym i loved uh i loved my energy at that time before 15 and 16 uh i was very much a virgin and very much into my band and the uh first was uh basketball and uh you know women we would sort of sneak talking about different girls and their fathers or their cousins or uncles, if y'all remember or if you ever had any of those. But back in the day in the early 50s and the early 60s, you just didn't talk about stuff like that. It was very backwards closet, and you sure didn't talk to your mother about it because your mother was, you know, back then, they were. it was during uh, the 30s, and 
they hardly got, uh, they were about food and, you know, saving things for the war. And I learned from my uh, great-grandmother, my grandmother, and my mother, and they weren't kissers or huggers. And I don't know if y'all all know your history and your family, but I think a lot of it from, if you go all the way back before we came to the planet and then on the planet, and then the history and then the suppression. But you know what? It's women's turn again. But, you know, I think we are always the ones in charge, and we're in charge of our own bodies, and I think that we have made some moral decisions that when it comes to touching another human body, that's assault. So we have to have an agreement to be touching another human. And now even with the Internet, we've put an age of 13 because we don't want them learning things before they need to. But then they're teaching sex now in class, and I'm like, in school. And I'm like, I never, we never had that. We had to hide in the PE room and sneak talking about stuff like that. So it's a totally different world today. You know, I wouldn't even know how to be a kid in today. Uh, I don't get to talk to my my grandkids or any of that, we're also spread out. So I, I don't, wouldn't even know how to have a conversation with kids today, but I'd make sure it was over 13 and preferably 18 before I did that. But that's just – now, art, of course, express yourself in art and music and all of that. I just think that's awesome. So I didn't. I can't say I've made any quilts. I've attempted to, and it was too, it took too long, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't deal with making a quilt. I just didn't have the patience. So, uh, But I did work on some great art, and I'm glad I went through that. I really did. But now when I did Tantrika stuff, that was enjoyable when I got introduced to that, and that was over an investigation. I was an investigator, and I was asked by an attorney to handle Moe Hamburger, who did Roto-Rooter. That's the name, and the way it goes trouble down the drain, Roto-Rooter, if y'all remember that. And, I remember. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was a very, that's the oldest man I ever dated, and he took me to meet uh, Charles Muir. I had no idea I was going to go into Tantra. I didn't even know what Tantra was. So I got introduced, and that was in 1984. So that tells you how many years ago. And then uh, I was introduced to metaphysics and Unity Church and became a, a priestess, so to speak, in the Unity Church and uh, very much a metaphysician. And I uh, got to do my readings and learn all about stuff. It wasn't until really late in life that I started learning about the UFO outwards because that was a secret, too. I was like, Janet, you couldn't talk about your ET life and your UFOs. That was sort of like sex, you know. <laughs> When I was up, so it's, it's all coming out now. So, Katerina, how do you want to take this? You want to tell people how it was cathartic and how it – I would be interested to see how it helps you express yourself. Are you saying it still does, your artwork? Wait, my artwork? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Uh, my artwork in the recent years since um, since healing from the fibromyalgia and all that, I – I realized that a lot of me was severed from that sexual part of me because I just, I, I needed to shut it down. It was, it was too abused. So for me, the artwork has been a place for me to, like, like I would actually like paint pictures of myself naked and hang them in galleries. <laughs> and it was almost like a, a way of being able to have people accept my body and people accept me without me needing to get up in front of everyone and be naked. You know, it was like, this is my body, and I, I, I need it accepted. I need to know that it is acceptable. And it was so fascinating, that process. So I, I went on this, this couple-year kick of, of painting naked bodies that resembled mine. And, um, you know, a lot of people were kind of uncomfortable with about it, and some people really celebrated it. And now it's it's like it's it's coming out even more like you know just just couples entwined and and just like this huge surge of passion coming through right. So for me, it's always been about spiritual expansion as well. So all of the women that have been naked in these poses, they're like reaching for the sun, or they're they're really like opening up their heart, or they are doing something that really symbolizes these these higher states, I guess if you want to call it like a kundalini awakening, like where there's really just a lot of energy flowing through their body. 
So that kind of symbology really helped me as I was dealing with fatigue and depression and all of these things because it gave me something to visualize. It gave me something to to latch on to, like a, an energetic state that I wanted to draw toward me. So that was kind of the process that I used to be able to um, to inspire my body to heal. And that's something that I don't think I've actually ever shared with anyone. <laughs> that I, I did use my artwork in a way to heal myself, you know, through visualization and intention and manifestation. So uh, I, I continue to do that with, ever, with whatever paintings I'm using. Currently, I'm surrounding myself with peacocks because I think that they're beautiful. And I recently just bought a, a laptop sleeve <laughs> with a bunch of peacock feathers all over it and you know, I'm very, very visual in that way. Like, I need these these anchors in my reality that are creative and artistic to to, to spark these spiritual states. Like, um, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm currently contemplating my next painting, and it's sitting on my easel right now. I'm thinking about doing, like, another peacock woman. So that's, oh. that's what I've done. So do you have a period that you go through like uh, so many people like I mine was only one period it was when I was breaking out and teaching psychic classes and I wanted to be recognized in the public and I would take my artwork to Aloha Stadium and sell it to passerbys at the flea market <laughs> mm-hmm. on Oahu and that's how I got recognition, and it made me feel good because people liked it. And then uh, they asked me to sell pogs with it, and they made collections out of it and all kind mm-hmm. of stuff. So it was sort of fun. It was very creative. So what have you done? You've put yours in a gallery, and uh, are you, you said now you're working, you started with uh, nude nudes, and uh, apparently Peacock Lady, you meaning uh, colors or is it a like a, your peacock period or something? Because mine was all. About, like, yeah, I think I'm going through a peacock period right now. I haven't been. <laughs> I haven't been showing in galleries recently. Uh, I actually am fresh back in the United States. I was in Costa Rica for about a year, and then before then, I was in Portland, Oregon, and I I just. I had took a break from doing gallery stuff for the past two years or so. So um, I think it was more of like a, a time for me to just kind of connect back with, with my own artwork rather than focusing on making stuff that other people liked, if that makes sense. Like, cause <laughs> sure. so I think eat. so many people who are in the public eye as artists, they, they, at first are making stuff because it is something that is really inspiring to them. And then, I mean, when you're getting all that feedback from other people, it can create this, this artistic ego that needs to be constantly fed. And for me, it was, got, it had gotten way too big and I was just overwhelmed and I didn't want to create anymore because, you know, there was so much pressure around doing gallery shows and doing commission paintings and all that. And I was just like, enough. Like, I really was burnt out at that time. And that's when the, the Artist's Way, the book by Julia Cameron, really came in handy for me. It was, like, around the second time that I did it, which was in, in Costa Rica when I was talking to Karen and doing those yeah. artist support circles. It was just that I needed to revive that part of myself because it was feeling really burdened and tired. And... Like, I, I just needed to figure out what it was that I wanted to create that was just for me and not for someone else. So, yeah. I think I've done that. something very important. That is important, the inner and the outer. And we discuss that a lot in metaphysics and mm-hmm. working with people as life coaches as uh, the fact that we all have an inner and an outer. And it does seem like we have to feed our inner as much as, are outer and uh, a, a lot of people do get confused about what is ego and Janet's a therapist and works with uh, individuals and couples along with her husband and I find that that's very rewarding but I had to get out of that myself and that's how I think I wound up going into psychic readings it was just more fun for me it was more artistic and mm-hmm. it was still a way to counsel people because I had lots of training in Hawaii but uh, 
it was during my artistic period, and I know what you're talking about because all of a sudden I had all these people want me to do this and want me to do that, and they wanted certain things done, and you wind up, I couldn't take their money, and I wouldn't. I was refusing it, and enough is enough, and the same thing happened as a psychic. I got to a point where you start giving and doing so much outwardly that you have to just you get burnt out, so you have to watch that. Just I, I've even did that with my radio show. Janet can tell you I was doing seven nights a week. And wow. uh, I just got where I had to stop. <laughs> I was just yeah. well, it's too hard. You know, you get to, you just, it, it's, if you do anything, they say too much, you know. So they say everything in moderation. And I think as an older woman now, I uh, I agree with that, everything in moderation, right? But that's mm-hmm. just my rhythm, my balance. So, totally. Karen? It's your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just I'm eating this up. This is the kind of stuff I really like to think about and talk about. Um, I'm going to throw a whole new thing in here because you were talking about metaphysics because because I kept trying our different artistic expression and I would get to a semi-professional level, occasionally professional, depending on what it was. Um, it's like when they reached the the peak of something, it's funny how I kind of unplugged from it because it's like I've learned what I needed to learn from that and just life circumstances wise, I will go to the next type. So I've done a good chunk of years in different types of art. And then when I got to, to the automatic writing, that's when I got feedback on what it was I was really exploring. And what I was really exploring was was manifestation and artifact and the underlying theme of thought forms and creativity. That's really where I was fascinated to do it myself and work with other artists. Um, and so I had a couple of, one of these days is my automatic writing stuff is going to be some books, but one of the passages talks about um, touch, you know, making things in the etheric. And, and I actually thought about that because there was times that when uh, I, I was a caregiver, so I had a lot of stressful periods and I literally would be in the hospital with someone or there would be some issues and I couldn't do art. It was just like I was physically doing things for the patient or my loved one. And so when I go to bed at night, I would paint a painting in my brain and, and I wouldn't necessarily some, uh, ever paint it or sometimes I would paint something like it. And it had a very satisfactory feeling. It was very relaxing because I was, you know, it was um, creativity, but it was all in that 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 space in our mind where we create. And it felt is is not not totally as satisfying as painting, real painting. Um, I love just you know glopping that stuff on the canvas. That's fun. And I do a lot of collage. I cut out a lot of paper. I tear a lot of paper now. I just that's a lot of like rage frustration. I do deco paired paper collage for my base, and then I paint over it. And that tearing part is really fun now. It's like rah rah rah. But um, you know, I can get my aggression out. But um, it, yeah, that's what I kind of got in touch with. And and the main thing that I found art to be is it in the artist way, and it's a recovery program. It's a, a number of weeks, and you go through it. And she has exercises like um. Every day you do three morning pages, so you just which man I've read those they're, they're pathetic. I haven't had my coffee yet, and I'm trying to write in the morning, and it's like mostly I'm whining, like I don't want to be up. What do I do this? You know, the morning pages were agony. Uh, but uh, <laughs> then uh, then you do an artist date, like you go out and do something artistic that inspires you. And I had a lot harder time with that, but I, I did do that. And then then there's uh, one that I love, media. You go on a media fast. You do not watch television. You do not listen to the radio. You you, you only go on the internet for business. Uh, it's like, oh man, you realize how much media you're imbibing. You know, that's somebody else's thoughts and visions and intentions. And uh, so you go through this process. But it's it, it, to get in touch with your shadow artist. It's it, it, it's to uncover under all of those layers of expectation and you know uh, you know what should a painting look like. You know. Um, I, I think one of the most horrifying things in the world, really, is when you go to a, a grade school and they do the everyone does a snowman for Christmas and all the snowmen look alike. That's kind of horrifying at some level. You know, <laughs> it's really horrifying. It's like, shouldn't they look different? I mean, if that kids actually went and made a snowman and they and all the turkeys for Thanksgiving look the same, and all the you know uh, apple trees and houses because they start homogenizing us very early. 
in life. And it's like, it, it should all be different if the kids were free to kind of think the way they want to. So it, that's kind of the things that you get in touch with. But um, uh, I really, uh, when I'm getting strung out and I know I'm I'm really stressed out, I make myself do, go do some art and, and, and I'm lost in that moment. Like I'm lost in it and the process. And you have to, you can't solve an art art problem with uh, any tools. You have to kind of go, oh, I remember one guy said uh, it was a cartoon and, and he was painting a giant pumpkin for, for fall. And he says, well, I think I'm done. And, and this guy inquired, well, how does an artist know that they're done with the painting? That's very interesting. And he goes, well, I'm out of orange. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, there's these problems. It's like I'm out of orange. I guess I'm done with this pumpkin. You know, um, so there's this whole, you know, uh, re- solving really strange problems. And once you solve some strange problems in your art, you go back to your life. And I think life is a series of strange problems. And you've got your creative mind turned on. And instead of am I going to do it this way or that way? Almost everything you do is dichotomy. You go. You find a different third, fourth, fifth way. And um, I really kind of wanted to ask Katerina about your, your coaching because now that you've, uh, uh, you're the wounded healer and you've uh, uh, gotten your own tool set, um, I would like to know more about now how's that translated like TJ was talking about and coaching other people because I know you do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I also... I, I coach creatives as well. Currently, I'm working with a woman who is a tarot reader, and she is working on her book. And so, for instance, she has been trying to get this book written for the past two years, and she's been coming up against all of these creative blocks, right? So I think that my role as a coach is to really be able to be that mirror for people. And sometimes we know we have blocks, and we know we have these limiting ideas about what's possible. And and sometimes we just really can't see ourselves from that third eye vantage point of view. So what I do with people is I will help them in the areas where I see that they are stuck and needing some assistance and I'll give them that little extra push, you know? So it's not so much like a, Hey, drop a, give me 20 push up kind of coach where a lot of people think about coaches, but it's more like, Hey, I've been there, you know, take me by the hand. I'll help you through this process that you're going through. And she's been so relieved because she thought that when she signed up for doing it with me, she thought that I was going to, like, bark orders at her. And really, it's it's about retraining someone to learn how to be gentle with themselves. So often, people have been so hard with themselves, especially creative, especially people who have been um, really wanting to get an artwork out into the world or wanting to, to feel better about themselves or feel happier, or, you know, like the happy, healthy caught saying that I do they they want to do all these things and they've been beating themselves up and trying to make themselves fit this rigid mold in order to get to the goal, right? And it's not about that. It's, it's about being able to let go of that structure and being able to feel into more of what it is that their heart really wants. And so I find that oftentimes people kind of know the path, but it's just they have a hard time really, really knowing that they know the path. So that's what I'm there. I'm like that guide along the path with them. That's great. A lot of people need mentors and others want guides and some teachers and some just a little nudge here and there. And uh, life coaching is a very special thing. It's getting more and more popular as a title. Uh, I don't know that I've a lot of people go in as profession, but, you know, it's interesting. I wrote a book actually on life coaching, and it's just basically a synopsis of what was out there for all of us to use as a basic guide. That's all I did it for. It was just something to give us a guide with. And uh, mm-hmm. I guess we all have to decide what it is. But artwork, uh, I hope everybody is uh, like uh, learned from school. Uh, Janet, apparently, I guess you had more of a rigid, uh, you know, I'm sorry, that in school, I loved art, but whenever we had it, I just didn't have it hardly in school. I don't know why we didn't. I mean, I, of course, I did the hand turkey that you're talking about, <laughs> you put your hand, the hand, and you make your turkey out of that, you know, the snowmen, like you said, the Christmas trees, you know, all the stuff they, they sort of, to, to get the, all the kids to do something, they got them all doing the same thing, and we'd put them on the board, 
I guess uh, uh, kids still do that. But nowadays, people have to go in. I see them shopping uh, for all these projects they do at school, and they call them projects. And, you know, there's no, not like, okay, we're just going to draw a turkey for Thanksgiving. They do all this stuff. And <laughs> Halloween, they'll start looking for all this artistic stuff at Walmart and the dollar store. And I'm, I just ask people, I'm like, what are y'all doing? Because <laughs> I see them buying all this stuff. Oh, this, my child's got this, or my kid's got this project in school. So times have changed. I, I don't even know how we're growing our children these days, but apparently education's uh a totally different thing than when I was growing up. Uh, but for us, I deal with mostly adults as a life coach. Uh, and apparently, mm-hmm. uh, Katerina, you're you're helping people. Now, are they finding you on the Internet? Is that from your website, or how do you market? Do they just happen yeah. to cross your spiritual or metaphysical path? I meet a lot of people through Facebook synchronistically and through YouTube synchronistically. I like I. I couldn't peg you my marketing plan because it, it's more of a spiritual marketing plan <laughs> where it's like yeah. I put myself out there and they just show up. And I'm like, all right, the person who comes to me right now is who I'm supposed to be helping. And and that's how my whole life pretty much works. It's, it's <laughs> when, you, when you really, like, open up to spirit and you're like, all right, what do you have for me today? And it's like they, it just shows you. That's wonderful. Well, yeah, and I got into it not out of the need of money, but after people wanting me to teach them. And I wasn't a school teacher, although my great my great grandmother was, and uh, my mother was always that type. But isn't it interesting how we get into things? But uh, it's just like Janet got me to write a book on my channeling, and uh, I think I'm, I've been prompted most of my life. So a lot of the things I've done. Uh, I wanted to do, but or I may mention it, but, you know, people in your life are very important. Janet's very important in my life, and she spurs me to do things I normally wouldn't do. I have a book out there called Enchanted Development, and normally I would never put anything out there like that, but I did. It's a very small little book, but it's a creation now, and I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for Janet. Do you have things like that? So maybe you're helping this woman get her book done because well, she needs somebody to exactly. push her. <laughs> exactly, because mostly what's what we were talking about with the repression piece is that the, the unfortunate thing that's happened is people have repressed their dreams too. So they have these little inklings in their heart that they don't feel like they have permission to pursue. And what I do is I really help dredge those out with them and, and like, okay, what is it that's really in your heart? Like, And why do you think that you can't have this thing or do this thing or or whatever, and and then we kind of pick through those things and and, and realize, like, oh, wait, this one isn't really true. That was something that someone told me when I was five. And, you know, you start dissolving all those agreements, and as you all know, that's that's how you do it. And and then you start moving through this process of, all right, what am I going to do today? What am I going to aim for? What am I going to put out as my intention? And you start moving along on the path, and you realize it's really not as hard as you thought it was going to be. And it gives you this whole renewed, uh, this whole renewed desire to live, and and you're like, wow, you know, how this is incredible, this is incredible. And like, for instance, I have a friend who I, I am starting to do workshops with here in the Austin area, and she healed herself out of being in a wheelchair and having like like paralysis from the waist down, and you know now she walks around and she has a really full life and she's able to be there for her daughter and and she just has like this most visionary aspect of her grounded with like this ability to actually make things happen and because she allowed herself to dream into the possibility of healing herself and getting better and and to not be confined by illness anymore you know it, it's like the sky's the limit like the sky isn't even the limit there's no limit you know <laughs> as to what people could do so that ability to dream is definitely a gift, and I'm happy that you have Janet there to help you with that. And, and I, I see all of you women are like that. You're definitely inspirers and, and people who can really show people that it's not so scary to live your dreams and to be that wild, free spirit that you feel on the inside. Well said. <laughs> Janet, do you want to talk about that? New wild side? Well... <laughs> Yeah, I am a pusher. I push people to do things. I I don't know why I do that. I just I I see things. Um, somebody recently asked me to watch um, 
oh, what's it called? Not charmed. That was yours. I, I'd like to have people uh, make suggestions if I... I hear it enough, I, I say, okay, it's coming from three or four different directions, and I better go uh, watch that or, or pay attention to that. So I'm watching a show about this woman that's a psychic, and um, she gets really excited about the dreams she's having. It was made back in the, the 90s, through the early part of uh, the 2000s. And um, she, she sometimes seems kind of crazy because she's so passionate, but she sees things. And that it must be media. <laughs> the I'm TV show medium you. with a blonde. Yes, but okay. So see things. Sometimes I just see these things. It's almost like I'm down the road in in the in a person's future, and it's like I don't know why you just have to do that. Just do that. Don't don't crush me. Just do that. And it turns out not a, not a hundred percent, but a lot of times, like what you're saying, TJ, it just turns out. And I and I'll just get this hypey kid and it's like, no, TJ, this is what you got to do. Just don't do that. And then then report. So I like how you you're saying that it worked out, but that I and sometimes I feel guilty because I'm pushing somebody to do something. But well, yeah, you give uh, me homework, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> She's giving me homework. I'm like, wait a minute. Who's the life coach here? But I'm like, okay. But I do it, and and I do it really fast. And she's like, you already did that? I'm like, well, yeah, you told me to. (laughs) But, you know, we all have friends, you know, and you just have to learn how to get along with each other and what it is. But, you know, I just don't – it's like I don't question her. It's just her way. You know, and we learn from each other, don't we, as to how we can uh, adjust as artists or authors or both. And uh, I invite everybody to be an author and artist with our group. And I have a ACE book club, and uh, we have ways just to get you involved. So I invite Karen and Katarina to be with us if you so desire. You just It doesn't require any money, and it doesn't require... We don't even ask you to show up unless uh, Janet wants to book you on a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but now, uh, projects so for you to so do, many, right? <laughs> Go ahead. My latest project. So I get somebody telling a story, and it's like, well, that's so interesting. Why don't we have you on a, one of our shows instead of just wasting it with a person conversation let's put it out to the world so i'm getting all these people to go on radio shows that never would have thought of it before but i i think a, you know a thousand years from now or a hundred years from now they're going to look back on some of these shows will survive the whatever happens through time and, and maybe at least it's going to the akashic records and and this will be uh archiving like you always said that we're creating our archives so we're it's kind of like uh, Charles Corralt went around the world, you know, creating these uh, archives of different people in the backwoods of America, and he was collecting Americana. Well, we're, we're collecting 21st century human beings and archiving it for future generations so they can see what we were like when we were waking up to the realities of what's really going on around us and what's been happening to our history and our true human potential. Okay, Karen, we haven't heard from you for a while. What do you want to say about all this? Uh, I'm super inspired. <laughs> like, I, I, uh, for the occasion of this radio show, I brought in a painting I was working on. It's like having a puppy in my lap. But I have, like, I have this painting that I'm working on. And I, and this was a, a, a you know like a, 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 a problem that I worked through. And, and the problem that I have is I'm kind of saying the financial situation where I don't have a lot of, supplies and things like that. And anything like support, like a, a canvas or even board to put something on. And I was scratching my head trying to figure out what to do. And I am a quad artist. And I realized I could, you know, this is what I did. I took freezer paper. I took uh, acrylic medium. I took that paper and tore it up and, and, and dyed it different colors. And I made a, I made a, a page, like a, like, like a made-up paper. And then painted over it. And then I painted a, I, I've been doing vessels lately. I've been painting pictures of, of Pottery, old pottery, uh, ancient stuff from the Etruscan era, and uh, I painted. I painted on top of it, and I painted an ossuary. And an ossuary is a is a jar that was used when people would uh, burn their you know loved one in a funeral. Because we I had several people pass away around me, and I was thinking about those things. And they would put the ashes in in a, a, a beautiful jar to have in their home, and and it's called the blue jar. And Somebody who's helped me in the past wants it, and I'm getting ready to send it. And I was able to take that paper thing and put it on the canvas, and 
you know, I didn't have, I have a bunch of these that I don't, when I get canvases, I'll be able to put them on there. But it's just like, it was a step-by-step -step process of thinking, okay, I want to do sketches over uh, paper. I don't have any supports. I made my own paper. I did the sketches. And it, it's blossoming into a really fun project. And, um, you know, I have to, I have to sit with it sometimes. Like, I'll have to go, okay, I got this far, now what? You know, and wait for that creative spark. Oh, wait, I could do this. Oh, wait, I could do that. And I, I, I realized if I could do that or something like that, I can do that about other issues in my life, including my financial ones. I think that's the one I'm really struggling with. You want to coach me right now, Katerina. Is, uh, my, whole, my whole relationship with money is, is I swear I'm from the planet that where they don't have it. And I think it's weird. And uh, as a re and I and I had a lot of very stingy uh, partners and uh, 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 growing up situations. It's like how do I like uh, I've been more in the space of making paintings and giving them away uh, or using them for personal expression. I've been in the I didn't do galleries. I did coffee shops, and I was a coffee mm -hmm. shop girl. So they would take uh, restaurants and coffee shops would take my stuff in the past. How would I like deal with my my uh, a paper aversion, my 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 paper fiat currency aversion. Okay. Uh, any advice? Okay, <laughs> I have a good set of advice for you right now. So first of all, what Wonderful. I'm hearing is that you have a lot of emotional memories around money, right? So yeah. I what I want you to do, Karen, is I want you. This is going to be hard because you're you're going to want to avoid it and i can tell you that because with 100% consistency i've seen people just avoid this this assignment but it's really I'll do powerful. it i'll i will do okay. it and i'll give you a report card when i do so okay. i'll do it all right <laughs> i will check back with in, with you in about a week so okay. the assignment is i want you to write anywhere from 20 to 100 money memories that you have like it doesn't have wow. to be the whole full on thing but just like the little trigger words that come up for you, write those down. And what this is is a, is a forgiveness list because oh. you have had these experiences that have shaped your perception of money, which is really just energy and it's whatever we, we believe it to be, either evil or good or whatever. And yes. when you go through and you write down all these memories, and it's, it's transformational what happens when you can like just cross out the memory and as you're crossing it out, say, I forgive you, I'm sorry, and I love you. Okay. It doesn't matter if you really feel it. It's just the act of doing that and just saying, I forgive you, I'm sorry, and I love you. Cross it out and then move on to the next one and just do this process. And you're going to have to really think about them when you're doing them. Like really imagine yourself being in that place where you were at like feel the stomach pain that you felt as you didn't get that raise that you wanted or you know when your mother withheld the, the thing that you wanted at the store and said no I'm sorry we don't have enough money like all of the, the, the really icky feelings if you're going through and just forgiving and releasing and just going through one by one saying I'm sorry or I forgive you I'm sorry I love you like it really will change a lot for you and then from there, you know, I can give you the next step. But it's just, that's a good one to start with. Oh, yay. With. I love yeah. it. I'll do they're it. mental blocks, but they're money Yeah, blocks. I've got this, I've got this, <laughs> amazing, I have this amazing, uh, I have this amazing, um, it, you know, the fact that I stuck that out there. And I have all of you guys and everybody listening as my uh, accountability group. So <laughs> I, I have to do this. Yeah. I have to do this. I have to do You're this. And, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you, and that's a good one. And, and, um, I want to know how long well, it is. I want to know how long your list is. <laughs> oh, my Some God, I'm going to get hanged. Like five to ten pages. It's just, it's, it's I deep. will. Money is a deep energy. It's just like sex. It's so taboo. It's so loaded. So, yeah. Wow. Gonna I'm going to get hand cramped. I'm going to get hand cramped this week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I bet you're going to find a hundred reasons why you don't have time to sit down and write this list. I'll yeah. do it. I'll, I'm, I'm committing. I will. You guys are all, all checking right. out, uh, checking back on me. Did she do it? And uh, I'll yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, she's going to check on you. Well, we can have you back next week. On Did this you do day. it? Say how, many, how long? How long's your list? And you'll know what we mean. 
And oh my you God! Say three or thirty or three hundred, and we'll say, "Okay, oh, did you man. forgive them all?" You know, so that's very. Uh, Janet, what is that called over in Hawaii? That name? Ponopono. A ponopono, yes. Yeah. Very good. Could you, guys, could you guys say that one more time? Because I've like read it a hundred times and never heard anyone say it. Say it really slow. Ho'oponopono. Ho'oponopono. Okay, cool. Yeah, and, and uh, I, actually this was also the Hado prayer. I learned it from uh, Masuro Omoto, uh, who was the water crystal guy that did the, you know how he did the water crystals, the I hate you and I love you and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I actually worked with uh, um, saving an artesian well in Olympia, Washington, and the, the whole experience, I learned a lot about water and weirdly, uh, the universe brought Dr. Emoto to our well to bless it and to teach us to respect water. And nobody oh. knows, nobody knows, but just a handful of us is that that week that he came and all the Native American people came and all, all of the pagan community and the religious community, we all honored our well and thanked Mother Earth for our well. That was the week that the deal that I had been working on for about 19 years finally went through and we were, we saved the well that week. And and I think it had to do with our gratitude and, and, and asking for forgiveness of Mother Earth for giving that wonderful gift to us. And uh, so I do believe in that and I'll apply it to my uh, uh, this experience for myself. Thank you. Beautiful. Now Beautiful. you wrote the word down, right? And you can look it up on the internet now that you know how to say it. Yeah, I, I've seen it. I just never heard it pronounced. Uh, so I was like, hope a nom a nom a nom That whole thing is it. Uh, well, I just, I just call it the hotto. Yeah, I call, I call it the hotto prayer because it's basically the same. It must be a specific rim uh, 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 thing because it's in Japan and it's in uh, Asia and it's also in the Pacific Islands, the ceremony and the ritual. And I actually wrote that on my water bottle. So when I would go get my water at the well, I wrote the Hado prayer. So I called it the Hado prayer, but Ho'oponopono, oh, 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 how's that? Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, right? Because I learned it in Hawaii 30, 40 years ago. Uh, but uh, I didn't know how to say it either. But I've, I've written it a million times or said it on radio for, you know, hundreds of times in the last three years. But couldn't remember it. I've had a lot of the women from Hawaii come on our show and uh, share that with us. So that was Wonderful. very thank unique, you. but it was a, yeah, it's a very loving energy. So thank you for that, Katarina and Janet and Karen. That's <laughs> awesome. Well, now, uh, what medium are you working in right now, uh, just for the listening audience? Because we have some digital artists. We have a, I happened to last night watch Face Off. I love to watch Face Off with them doing all the uh, mask and whatever assignment they have. And then I watch Project Runway, which Harvey Weinstein produces, right? Uh, you know, Heidi <laughs> Klum's group and, and uh, sewing. So uh, to me, it's all art. Everything's art. We're art. You know, somebody created us. <laughs> it's all art to me. <laughs> but uh, what, what are you into, Katarina, your, your uh, mediums right now? Well, my mediums right now, I am been doing a lot of writing, uh, just blogging and that kind of thing, and also just my my tangible work that I do is is in acrylic. So the paintings that I do are all acrylic, and I've just been just working and thinking about what the next painting is going to be. And yeah, I just have my paintings all over my house that I had created when I was in Costa Rica, and it just um. My favorite medium is doing acrylic. I tried doing digital art for a little while, but um, it, it really wasn't the same. I like graphic okay. design, you know, dragging right. and dropping elements and such and doing Photoshop kind of things is pretty fun. But uh, I like getting my hands dirty. I like feeling the paint. Yeah. And, uh, when I was young and acrylics were big, but I was in oils, uh, my husband's mother was an artist, and uh, I had art in my grandparents' home and all that. And I, whether they were great or not, they hung them up, but I, I guess they were okay. But uh, I don't know if you do this or if you remember, but they would t- uh, take some type of acrylic and bake it in the oven and make it pop up. Have you done that? Mm. 
make it. No. Yeah, interesting. You may want to try that. Yeah, I, but you may want to check with an uh, artist uh, before you do that. I, I haven't done that since I was a little kid, but uh, mother had us doing that. And my mother, she put us into a needlepoint or pulling uh, like potholder things. I don't even know what it was, some kind of rugs. We all had went to the store and bought these things where you'd pull different like animals, lions or something through but she taught us all kind of things my mother did. She was one of those uh, homeschoolers, but she wasn't. I mean, we went to public school, but, you know, I mean, she was one of those kind of mothers that was always thinking about her kids and teaching us things. So I learned to sew and I learned art and all that stuff, but mostly from my mother, interestingly enough. So who taught you? Are you self-taught, Katarina? I learned about art through my grandmother. She was pretty extraordinary, and she... She was a painter, so she didn't actually teach me the technical skill of paint, but she taught me the appreciation of art, which, you know, later on I I kind of self-taught and then took some classes at school and then later on took a couple college classes about it. But, um, yeah, for me it was just always the art appreciation that preceded any of it. I remember coloring in my coloring books and really wishing that I could paint like the masters and, you know, my, my... paled in comparison, but they were still cool in their own right. But I think that um, it was really when I was 12 that I started to take a, a keen interest in, in drawing and uh, actually making things look similar to how they appeared in reality. And, you know, from there it was like surrealism. And so then it was observation of some of the master painters like Dolly and uh, Matisse and, and all of them that really inspired me. So I, I, I learned sort of through imitation, um, through like composition and all of that. But yeah, the just technical ability to put paint on canvas was stuff that I learned in school. Well, are you going to put some in Austin, Texas, maybe? Because you are one that has been commissioned and you had some obviously on display in Costa Rica. So uh, what type of... Uh, uh, well, I mean, public recognition was because we all need that. But at the same time, you don't, you, you know, you want to let people know who you are and where you are. And of course, you have the uh, internet now to help spread that cheer. And then mm-hmm. people can find you for life coaching. And uh, again, I'd like to invite you to be one of our life coaches, or whatever, if it's going to be art coaching or whatever. But uh, Janet and Karen, we can all stay in contact with you, you know, but it's funny, we don't keep a list really, but uh, we're thinking about, we just know, and I think uh, Karen's pretty well explained, we're all sort of using Facebook, we have a new group, a Xenonet group, and Aquarian Radio group, and uh, I don't know, just all kind of out there, so just uh, make sure you stay in touch with us if you don't mind, and uh, maybe Wonderful. we'll find some other people to, uh, you know, Want to hear this show? Or sometimes Janet and I have found that as uh, whatever it is that we do in synchronicity comes back a year or two later. Interestingly enough, I'm sure you've learned that about yourself. And as you get older and you don't get in a hurry, as you're mm-hmm. creating and working on yourself, it is like art. And then later mm-hmm. on, people come and exchange your energy with money. Yeah. <laughs> it's like. And put it oh, in a money. red envelope and hand it to you. And you're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so yes, that's something thank you. Karen's going to learn, too. And I have always was gifted that way. I, uh, uh, my children would never tell you that because they went through the, I was the young mother Cinderella complex disaster mm-hmm. as a teenager programmed. And they don't know the woman as the after 50 You know, a couple Mm -hmm. of them sort of do, but uh, one of them actually said, I'd like to get to know you, Mother, as a woman. Sort of freaked me out, but I was like, you know, I I get what she was saying because she lives in Florida. (laughs) And, you know, ever since she was a teenager and I got her paid for uh, 100 or 200 uh, a day or so for her to go to some special school in Hawaii and get her limo service and then had her get a modeling contract and then she blew it to go to the death leopard or some kind of kind (laughs) you know she just blew her life and wound up marrying some surfer dude in south carolina (laughs) so (laughs) it's always 
what you're trying to do for them, so don't take it personally. It's just part of them defining themselves and discovering who they are in relationship to the apparent other, which is you, the apparent other. I know. <laughs> I, I, you Funny. Know, you get... Oh, the kids, don't, all of them are unique, all four of them. They're, but you know what's funny is all four girls, and they're all part of me, as to the time I can see in them as women, or as, as, uh, they're all over 40, uh, a part of me that was in me, my insecurities. That's, it seems like at every age, even though they were only two years apart, it happened to be in their formative years, I would say five to ten and they all seem to graduate into my, uh, not necessarily my positives, but my negatives. And I'm sure we could all do a show on us inheriting our parents' bad traits. <laughs> Glad I used that way. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to give us a heads up. We are, uh, we do have about 30 minutes left, uh, but I don't know if we've exhausted this subject, what we want to do. I, I, I'm getting a feeling it would be good to do a, a wrap-up round and um, call it a day, uh, unless there's some burning shares that are out there. <laughs> what do you think feedback from this, everybody here? What would you like to do? I think that sounds good. Okay. okay. So let's start with uh, Karen. You want to do like a final question or wrap yeah. up or final statement yeah yeah i i uh, uh love it you talked a little about uh, intergenerational stuff I, I i'm feeling that i would i was i'm waiting for the time when the kids want to know me now you know i had that uh, opportunity with my older relatives and my crafty older relative with my grandmother my grandmother never she had a blouse she was going to do something else to it she took the sleeves off and make pockets and you know, fix the buttons the way she wanted, and uh, uh, she was very crafty. And I think uh, uh, the the intergenerational part, we all have, you know, the, 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 one of the things our planet needs to heal is our intergenerational um, experiences because we, th this constant separation, and this is part of what artists want to go on together and, I don't know, people who think left brain, they want to separate it and categorize it and monetize it and all that. Um, artists are, 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 are scary to very uh, ordered people. <laughs> and uh, a discussion that came up with my mother once, it was kind of funny, I got to know my mother and my grandmother and my older relatives in their older years. And, and, and there's still developmental stages that happen to you in your 40s, your 50s, and I'm sure your 60s, where there's other levels that you reach because we, we begin to integrate and, and integrate all our experiences. And uh, my mother and I came up with something we thought was kind of fun for the creative types, but we found out that our creative people had in our family were afflicted with something we called the chaos gene. <laughs> and mm. if you've got the if you got the chaos gene, you know who you are. Uh, today I tried to put a lid on top of a canister and it flew across the room. I don't know how that happened. But it just happened. It just flipped out of my hand and bounced and ding, ba bong, ba bong, like a stone. Like yes. And, yeah, um, I have so, and we have these other people in our families that they're so organized and orderly and they kind of make us feel bad because it, the weird stuff never happens to them. They do not understand. But what's fun is the chaos gene people, because they have such, I think it's an energy. There's even something called chaos magic. It's our energy is, is creativity is like an energy around us and so it, it kind of forces us to have to be creative because because something strange will happen and we have to recover you know um and so we have come up with a creative way to recover and get things back to normal and we always it's like jazz music we have to improvise more maybe than other people do and uh and then on the other hand we do astonishing things that those people go how do you do that or what made you think of that or they don't understand that we can do something so astonishing and so unexpected. Um, it, it, it kind of goes both ways. But it was it was something we talked about. So the Chaos Gene people in my family, when we get together, we share Chaos Gene stories. It's, it's a very amusing uh, tradition in my family to share our uh, stories of my cousin chasing skunks under his house and a... Uh, uh, I had to get rid of a porta potty that somebody gave me that was full, and <laughs> you know just weird stuff, weird stuff. And one time, my uh, my 
uh, one of my relatives called one of my other relatives, and they were stuck on the side of the road, and and uh, and and they they were appreciating the fact that that there could be a moose in their car, and they would still help each other. <laughs> There's a moose in the car, so we had we called it our moose moment, you know, uh, having our moose moment, and um, so you know, it's just it, it's. It's on the one hand, it, it's the chaos can be very challenging. It can it, we can have breakdowns in what we thought was what we wanted in life. You know, I've had uh, two divorces and all kinds of you know issues like that. And and a, a, my beautiful daughter, my beautiful angel Biggie B, is an artist. She's an artist. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Good lands. Talk about. There's, there's our chaos moment. There's our chaos moment right on cue. There's the moose. Shoot, hold on. Hold on. Okay, suddenly the other speaker started working. Uh, I can hear an echo. There you go. Chaos moment right on cue. Stop. Uh, oh, wait. Let me go back to the show. Maybe I can get it there. Okay. On. Okay. I'm just going to mute. I'll mute me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, turn your speaker down maybe on something, but that's interesting. Well, well See, uh, the thing is, the show. full circle. Well, Jan- Remember, she yeah, come on, getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Janet. Uh, you know, doing the technology to do these shows. Uh, there you go. It, we 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 roll with it. We laugh about it. We learn from it, and uh, that's my. That's my statement is that uh, that magical chaos uh, is a gift. It really is a gift. And if anyone's going through chaotic stuff and it feels so out of control, in my opinion, it, it really is a gift when you finally are able to look at it and look how you survived and look how you improvised all kinds of life solutions for yourself. So that's my wrap-up. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, Okay, I'll go next. Uh, I missed tonight uh, one of the gentlemen that helps us start Wednesdays, and uh, Paul Lang, and he said it very interestingly last week about uh, if you know about the sand on a plate or, or something aluminum, like a hubcap or something, however you want to do it, but and you put it in front of, of a loudspeaker maybe, and you see it vibrate, and it'll make pretty patterns. And, of course, there's a name for it and all that, and I don't know what that is right now because my brain's not working that great. But uh, many things that we think are falling apart are actually falling into place. And uh, it was a very good thing that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, he he shared information about he used to think it was all like chaos to order. Or sometimes it's order to chaos, isn't it? Because you may get your house in perfect order and it goes into chaos, doesn't it? Coming and going because you don't have time to put this up or that up. And, oh, my gosh, you got to run to the doctor. Oh, my gosh, I forgot this. And, or, oh, I'm too tired to do this. Or, okay, we'll just do the dishes tomorrow or something. And then all of a sudden you have chaos again. So I'm learning all this energy. And uh, I believe each human has their own journey on the path of their spiritual path here. And I believe we're all souls or spiritual people, spiritual beings, sentient beings. But we're we're all out there without our physical body. And when we pass over, we just go to another plane and dimension. And I've done that. So I look at life maybe uh, – people I, – I feel like I'm a very ordinary person – Just having extraordinary uh, or extraordinary uh, things happen. And for a long time, I wouldn't accept that about myself. And as a matter of fact, uh, I was having myself checked in the last 10 or 15 years, uh, during menopause especially. But I was trying to find things wrong with me all the time, and they weren't there. So, of course, I, I did have something wrong with me, but that was due to a back break and a neck break and things like that. But that uh, something I was in, one of those chaos moments. But I learned to grow from it and have it not hold me back. But it did change my life because I wasn't out and about that athlete, you know, that I was traveling the world. So uh, this Internet came along and has been very satisfying to me and sharing a community online with other people has been very rewarding, and yet I still miss my children 
and just when I was in the military, and some of them resented things like, my mom wears combat boots. No, really, that was a joke. They would say, no, my mom really does wear combat boots. And so the, I had to grow up with kids that sort of resented mommy being the daddy type, if any of you have ever had to relate to a two-family you know, both parents had to work, and uh, it got worse, I understood. So now I think everybody, my sisters, uh, their husband would stay home and take care of the kids while they worked. And I saw the world change, and it's still changing. And we have to be very open-minded. So what I'm doing here with Janet and Karen and obviously Katerina is we're sharing our inner self and bringing it out to the world to hear and we hope that somehow you'll find something in you that may want to share with us and get to know us. And I really believe that coming out, it's very cathartic, as they say, but uh, communication is uh, very important. And uh, I know sometimes I really don't want to do it, and I have to force myself. But, uh, you know, I feel like that's sort of part of my journey and part of my gift is to help people come out. So. I hope uh, you guys will keep tuning in, and thank you, everybody, on Facebook that's finding me and finding us, and thank you, Karen, and I hope uh, we can grow our Xenonet and our Xenolinguistics and our Xenoarchaeology groups, uh, and I hope to grow our artists and our authors group, and Katerina, I invite you to uh, maybe be a part of this, and we'll see what sticks. You never, we can invite the entire world, <laughs> but uh, Janet and I have learned that not everybody sticks, and it, it takes a special um, kind of person to say they'll do something, but I went through a, a period where people, all the same people in our community were the same ones in all the clubs, and we finally started saying, no, we can't join any more clubs. And now I'm seeing that on Facebook. Everybody's joining everything in all the groups. And it's going to get to a point where everybody's going to start saying no. So uh, we're going to create a whole new Xenoverse out there. And we have Xenoverse, a group on Facebook, too. So I'm just going to let it happen. I'm not going to try to force anything. And I, I, I am one of those, Karen, that has a lot of... Uh, stress as far as uh, 3D stuff that just happens. I'm the one that will go into the kitchen and try to help somebody. I'll say, will you grab the sugar bowl? And I'm the one that trips and spills it all over them and me and the floor and the ants come and the wasp come in and everybody's swatting at wasp and it's getting all over the floor. You know, and it's like one thing happens after another. So just so you folks know, I know I'm not perfect, but I love people and I especially love our Wednesday nights with women. So Thank you, Janet, for doing this, and uh, I hope to uh, participate again next week and Saturday, too. So back to, uh, what is it, Katerina or Janet now, I think? No, I, Katerina, did you speak a fight, your final words? I got lost. I did not. No. Oh. Okay, it's Katerina's turn. That's what I thought. Go ahead. Uh, I'm blanking out. Can I have, like, a prompting or something to, to prompt yeah, sure. your uh, how to get in touch with you and, you know, what okay. all you feel that you brought to the table tonight, that kind of stuff, you know. All right. Well, um, my my spiels about passion and the power and all of these juicy feminine topics are definitely all over at my blog at KaterinaRoy.com. And there will be more being populated there very shortly here. It's a brand new website that I've been creating and, Along with that are my new coaching offerings about, uh, you know, really learning how to become that happy, healthy, hot woman that, you know, so many of us really want to be and to tap into, though, you know, we get lost with these side trails off into the diet world or into trying to please everybody or trying to deny ourselves true happiness in an effort to become this person that, we I think that we're supposed to be. So I I really want to invite people to be able to come and explore what it's like to really tap into passion and, and all that it can do for your life and, and, and how healing it really can be when you step into that place of power and that place of confidence and that place of juicy vitality. So that again is KaterinaRoy.com and I will very shortly soon have a a happy, healthy, hot group that people can come and share their unabashed selves where they can be expressive and 
and crazy and, and just do this emoting, this inner self sharing that we're all talking about because it's really, really, really important and it's extremely healing on all levels. So I will definitely come join you all over at your artist and writers group and I look forward to being in contact with all of you ladies because this was an amazing phone call and I'm really excited that Karen, thank you for for inviting me in. This has been so unfiltered and so raw. I love it. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> I like that about you, though, Katerina. That is one of the assets in your gifts. So keep doing that. <laughs> keep being Katerina. And you'll Thank find you. out Janet's, Janet's very much that way, but she puts it in a left brain logical that makes it sound okay. <laughs> I don't know how she does it. She's a very, you know, like five two, little tiny petite woman, and oh, yet she. Can, well. Yeah, I'm five eleven and huge, and so, you know, I weigh two thirty two, five eleven, and you know, even at my three percent type body fat, I was one seventy six, still five eleven in the Navy. So, oh. you know, I'm a big woman, but uh, I appreciate all these women out there, and I hope we'll continue sharing uh, this feminine aspect of being real. It's mm-hmm. uh, men, too. I mean, but they want their turn, don't they, Janet? We used to give them Thursday night. I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so, uh, well, let me go over the, the schedule a little bit here. We First of all, I wanted to thank you, Katerina, for coming on our panel tonight. Um and I really enjoyed the topic. We kind of cut loose and had fun. We had a number of people in the chat. And I want to encourage all of you to take the link at the end of the show and uh, spread it around all over your Facebook and you know, social network pages and let everybody come and um, enjoy it because it was quite a lively conversation. My husband came in, and he, I don't know if you heard him. He was in the background. He was kind of laughing at us. <laughs> he was enjoying it. <laughs> and so. I think we were we created a good vibe here. Uh, tomorrow we're going to have a show with Michael Lee Hill, Janet Care Lesson, Dr. Sasha Lesson, and Clay. I don't know Clay's last name. I think he gave it to you, but it didn't, it didn't make it into my website yet. We're going to talk about the Leaky Institute End Times and Earth's Future Studies, which is about the Life Physics Group and A. R. Borden, which was an he was an interesting character. He's no longer with us. He died in 2013. But he was working with the extraterrestrials, and uh, it was a real deal. So we'll go into that. This will be an ongoing uh, educational program on Thursdays with Michael D. Hill as our ongoing guest. And the topic on Thursdays will be anything Anunnaki, especially the, in the next few weeks we're going to cover A.R. Borden. And that is, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, Friday, no, that's Thursday. Today's Wednesday. So then Friday, we're going to have an experiencers group. Uh, Karen, do you know who our guest is for Friday? Anyway, you might be gone already, but I'll look up real quick here as I'm wrapping up the show. Sorry about that. I'm so prepared. Um, <laughs> Are you still here, Karen? Karen must have dropped off. Uh, she runs out of battery. Anyway, I'll get this oh, from. Okay. I'll get. Karen, Friday we do Experiences Network, and Saturday we do um, Amy in Contact Organization once again with T.J. Morris as our co-host. Oh, I think we have Ray Kasalandic this Friday on um, Experiences Network, and I'm not sure who. Karen has lined up for 70. Anyway, I've got to catch up with her. But we do basically four shows a work of uh, a week on the Aquarian Radio Network, and TJ will be coming back in September, October with her shows, and Karen is helping us book the shows. If you are out there and, and you are experiencer, investigator, author, uh, whistleblower, life coach, life coach have something author. interesting. For us to talk about, go to AquarianRadio.com to the Be a Guest link at the very top uh, corner. You can fill out an application. But I would also suggest you write to me at AquarianRadio at gmail.com, and we will um, hand that over to Karen, our, our booking agent, and she'll get it on a show sometime in the next month or so or two or three, whatever. We're, we're putting these shows together by... Loosely by categories. 
And Sundays, of course, is uh, the, the uh, what do we call it? Sacred Matrix on Revolution Radio. This Sunday, we are going to be, Dr. Les and I do that show, and we're interviewing Kiwani Lasparitis. Lasparitis, he's the um, Bigfoot researcher, and uh, he's got a lot of... his wife on, too? Hey. She's pretty cool. They I met on not, our radio show, Janet. His, he yes, met his I'm wife. Sure. Or she, yeah. She hasn't confirmed, but I think she might be there, and I don't even have her name, so I'm going to get that information as well. Anyway, we're doing the best we can. We get this information up here, and everything is right now is on com, and we have, um, what's what's our uh, Ascension Center.net, and yours is Ascension Center, TJ? Org.com, Ascension Center org.com, and we have a... I have uh, uh, Janet has ascensioncenter.net. And, right. Uh, uh, yeah, and then we both have aliencontactorganization.com. Janet's always spelled out aliencontactorganization.com, and I am aliencontact.org. And uh, <laughs> she shares in Hawaii and Kentucky and in the USA. Each state has to do their own thing. But Janet and I, uh, we're an unincorporated association of people, and we're basically doing social media through Facebook and other things and radio shows. And I will be back in September, and uh, we'll have some of the same people. Are we are going to have different people on different nights? So it just depends on what all we need to do for the universe. So thank you for this opportunity. Katerina, I hope you come back, and we'll have you on a certain night, maybe if you feel like uh, being on a panel or whatever. And that's yeah, Karen, that's Karen sure. being good about that. Yeah, so stay in touch with us. and. I added y'all on Facebook, so, and we will be in touch. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah, T.J. T. Morris or Teresa J. Morris, Janet Carol Lesson, Janet Lesson, and like I said, we just started this Xenonet, net, X-E-N-O, net, Xenonet, the strange network of people, I guess, and <laughs> we'll, uh, we're doing ancient clues and views with uh, Janet Bruce Cunningham and her husband, and there, you never know where you're going to find us. Dr. Lesson's very good about posting, and I do my best every day to post various Facebooks and many, many websites, and Janet does too. So we're very eclectic beings, and we're helping each other. So join us and uh, make some new friends. Yeah. Right, Janet? Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's it for today's show, and thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you again tomorrow, and much love and blessings, and everybody say aloha. Ready? One, two, three. Aloha. Aloha.